So hello everyone. <laughs> hello everyone and thank you for attending this session. Uh, my topic today is uh, email marketing done the open source way. I will talk about an email marketing software tool which is uh, for sending newsletters and email campaigns. Let me introduce myself first. I am a community advocate and community manager for PHP List. I am a Fedora ambassador, which I suppose does not impress anyone here. Uh, a Wikimedia volunteer and an Open Labs Hackerspace member, which is a local uh, open source community back in my country where I met all of these open source communities that I'm involved with. So PHP List is a 100% open source software. It is licensed under the AGPL version 3 license. It is hosted on GitHub. Uh, was initially launched 20 years back in 2000, in March 2000, and it is a community driven project. This is a simple screenshot from the PHP List dashboard, which is what the uh, administrators see. As of context, uh, just a small parenthesis. Uh, I am employed to PHP List Limited, which is a company that offers uh, support for customers that do not want to host the, the software themselves, and they just want to use it. So what is this session about? About two years ago, we started uh, thinking and reconsidering the development cycle we used to follow. Um, so we started researching and meeting to each other and talking to each other and see what other uh, development approach we could follow at that time until we end up to what we have here. Another thing to have in mind was the three different projects that were running simultaneously. It was the PHP List 3, which is the software we have now. We are currently on version 3.5.0. PHP List 4 and the REST API, which are work in progress. PHP List 4 is a rewritten version of the, um, the one that we have now. And the CMS, which is the software used for the hosted clients. Uh, why it was considered a different development approach? First of all, uh, releases at that time were happening, uh, were feature based and not time based. And that means that we would have a new release every time that all this list of features that were preset was met and implemented and not have a specific and concise time frame of the releases. Why was that a problem which we realized two years ago? First of all, we had a consistent time frame of the releases and nobody knew when we will have a new release. And we will have a new release every three months or maybe every seven months. Uh, it would take way much longer for the community actually to benefit from the software itself because uh, it would take longer, longer to, de to deliver the final product. Uh, the community couldn't get further develop, uh, involved. And another thing that was uh, very important to us was the testing phase which would take longer at the time because it was internal, internal and there was no better version of the, of the software. So, <laughs> meetings started, calls started going on because most of uh, the team was spread in different cities and countries and we started uh, considering an agile approach. What was considered on the way? So, agile was the first thought but actually we had to put way much more thought from behind because uh, we could not be as strict as a diet would suggest. So we had to adapt somehow our activity and with the community and the releases and the features that we wanted to add. So how agile actually could we be? Did we have the resources to do that? How quickly could we adapt? How that would affect the way we're doing things. These are some of the challenges and thoughts that we had before we actually uh, decide what to do and which we tried to, to, to resolve later. Some, uh, some of the options that we had in mind was a six-month 
or a three month or a one month release cycle. We soon realized that the most agile approach would have been the one month releases and that would uh, solve actually the problem raised earlier. How that would affect the way we are doing currently things, we were doing uh, things at that time, uh, would actually, uh, we were able to meet our deadlines because one month is a very short amount of time and uh, did we have the resources to implement everything that we had in mind at that time? As of context, um, the community was not much involved on the testing phase. So another thing that would come up was the upgrading process, which would uh, conclude on a ton of errors. And we didn't want to have people spend time troubleshooting upgrade or configuration problems, but we want them to focus on actually testing and using and trying the, the software. So that was then when the automatic updater was introduced. Um, the automatic updater is uh, a process in order to update the software uh, um, easily and low the risk of errors. Uh, it's an automatic process uh, and you don't have to actually have any technical skills in order to upgrade uh, to the latest version. So we had to choose our tools, what we had on our defense. We kept using, instead of introducing actually a new learning curve, we thought that we, it would have been better to keep what we had and adapt it on a new way of uh, doing things. We kept Mantis. Mantis is an open source backtracker in order to put our roadmap there, discourse uh, in order to be in touch with the community. Nextcloud for our meeting notes and Jitsi for the daily stand-up calls. The daily stand-up calls was, were a key element actually to the communication between the team. We, they were uh, very short calls of 10 minutes where people would just mention what is a blocker to them and what they will do next. Just, just that. No questions. If you would have questions, you would schedule uh, a different meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Some of the challenges faced was actually deciding what is a priority and what is not. In a small team of developers, uh, there is not much room of setting very high or more goals. So we had to be realistic on what we can uh, actually achieve or not. Uh, or, and what to expect from the community. One ha what happens when the roadmap goals are not met? managing the backlog, how to manage the community involvement. We had people actually submitting very useful PRs and people who would just ask for features they dreamed about. So where we stand after 17 months of uh, working that way, we have a software which is 17 times more updated uh, now. 17 times updated does not mean that have been implemented only 17 features. More, it's more than that. Uh, we are currently on version 3.5.0, which was released only 10 days ago. We have uh, community members submitting pull requests on every release, and I'm very happy and proud to announce that on every single release, there have been at least one community contribution. And features get faster, uh, delivered back to the community. And I would also wanted to add that the community is also um, involved on the testing process because about a week before the final release, we have scheduled um, the, the beta release, the release candidate, where people can actually install and check it. So that is all for me. It was a short presentation. I would like to thank you all for listening to me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm interested to know how you kind of became a community manager for, for this project and company. Oh, sure. <laughs> and can I ask you to repeat the question, please? Oh, yeah. So, the yeah, yeah. so the question was how I uh, became the community manager of the project. Uh, about 
three and a half years ago in 2016, I joined Open Labs Hyperspace, which is a community in Tirana, in Albania, in my country. And we organized a conference, which is named Open Source Conference Albania, OSCAL. And there I met Fedora, I met Wikimedia, and of course, PHP Leaks, they had a booth there. So I came in touch, started with uh, email marketing. I had no idea what it was at the time. I was just a student. I was not interested into this uh, marketing part. So I started meeting actually developers that used to work on that and uh, people that were involved. And about a year ago, last year, I also got employed and became the community manager. And I'm very happy. It, it, it was a step-by-step -step process. Yeah. I think things are open for, for that conference? Yes, we opened yesterday, I think. Some of the organizers are here, you can talk to them. Some of them are standing next to you. Yes, the CFP is already open, so everyone who is interested can apply. Any other question? Um, how did you find switching to the, so you switched to a time-based release schedule? And how did you find Feature that? Feature-based. Okay, so now we are time-based, like we have monthly uh, releases. Uh, we have the uh, release candidate on the 5th and the final release on the 11th of each month unless something urgent comes up and we schedule it for a few days now. And have you noticed that that's changed the engagement with your community? In yes, way? because actually if I am using something and I don't know when an update will come, like we had updates, if you go back and check the, uh, the releases from the previous year, you will see a release every three months and then every seven and then every five. So that was not consistent and people didn't have something to wait for because they didn't know when it will come. So some, now people um, have something to wait for and they know it's going to be there and the announcements are on the uh, forum. So. I guess also if you're evaluating something like should I should I bet my tech stack on this piece here? It's like if you, if nothing happens for seven <coughs> months, you're like yeah yeah like, yeah is this thing dead or yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes yeah sure. Raise your oh, voice. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I'd like to know about your, your experience managing the community and getting contributions. Like, did you, was it challenging to get people to contribute? Yeah. To okay. And, so, and how did you do it? So the question to summarize it is whether was there any challenging managing the community. So the PHP Leaks community actually is consisted of people who are quite technical because the software itself, the software process requires some technical skills in order to, to install it. So people who actually contribute it um, are um, quite technical themselves. And they are not, we don't expect young students to contribute. So most of these people, uh, the way why they get motivated as I understand it is because they want a software as much complete as it could be with much more features. So that's why they get their hands dirty and, and work and submit code uh, all the time. So there are months and uh, p certain periods of time where we have more pull requests from the community and there are months where it's not that you know intense. But still, the fact that it's continuous, I would say, that's a very positive uh, outcome from their engagement. Yeah.
think with our community, I feel that they have very uh, strong opinions. <laughs> so, and uh, they are totally um, willing to participate in um, implementing the things that make their life easier. Also, because uh, we also support different uh, community members at the work, uh, they're doing jobs to support each other uh, at the job generation stage here. So they have a very key insight of what uh, actually people want from the software. Uh, so they are very interested in the Can I just follow on from, from that question? Like, how technical do you need to be to be a community manager? Oh, you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Well, I am not that technical as the community members, but what I try to do, for example, we have scheduled several community calls we, where we would gather uh, some uh, community members, and they w we were very interested on hearing their feedback because, as Suela mentioned, which is also part of the team, some of them are, let's say, resellers, if I can call them like that, for the software th itself. So they know it from the inside. So we are very interested in knowing actually what they want from it, how they want to see it in the future. So managing, I mean, I don't write code myself. I can read, but I don't write code uh, myself. So I would say that you don't have to be that highly technical in order to, um, to manage this group of people. Can I ask yep. a question about that? So, if, okay, so if you, if you don't need to be so like as technical as the community to be the community manager, what what do you say are kind of like attributes or skills or qualities that you need to be successful as a community manager? Uh, on that particular case, I would say that I have been for more than three years involved with open source communities as a community member myself. So I started actually as a volunteer before, before I get to this position. So at that time I felt like um, the community manager, manager was the person to actually go and ask questions and guide me until I, I figured out that I can do things and just let them know that, you know, I did that. And this is what people like do because uh, they are more experienced than me and I am very happy to hear from them what they do, but they also don't expect me to approve it somehow or, um, I don't know, we have also more technical people on the team, so if they face technical problems or technical issues or the pieces of code that they submit uh, on GitHub. So there are other people that can um, answer their questions and help them troubleshoot anything that comes up in the way. So, and it's also uh, another thing that they help each other. So they don't expect someone else to, to deal with their, with their issues. So if I'm not the technical person, but for example, I'm doing email marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So I can be also part of the community, community to like join to this discussion and uh, show like, you know, what I'm expecting maybe from the, from the software and so on. Yes, absolutely. So another thing that I would love to see for PHP list is that our forum is mainly uh, full of technical issues. For example, I tried to install it and then the database uh, an error came up, but I would love actually to see more marketers come on the way because uh, most of the community, not def necessarily the community, but the people involved in this uh, are system administrators themselves or coders or okay. stuff like that. But I would love also to see people that use the software in order to promote their business and mm -hmm. make profit, share tips and, um, okay. and advices. So mm -hmm. that would be great to have such okay. contributions. And one more question. So uh, do you have any experience with like internal email marketing? Like uh, do somebody use it for the internal 
marketing or so yes we try to do our email marketing as well yes <laughs> and send some uh, <coughs> newsletters and uh, Right. The last one that was sent was uh, about a month ago we, where we actually asked for people to evaluate the product on other independent uh, websites and platforms. Okay. You have another question? Yeah, I'm just wondering, do you use PHP list to do those in the market? Absolutely! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. What brings them there? Uh, we have many resellers actually of the product. It, it is so. It has been proven that PHP List is the most open, uh, popular, open source product, and hence it's free. And open source people are uh, free to modify it, so they change a lot of stuff. So companies actually use the product, and they try. Yes, they ask for the from the system administrator to do the dirty job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's free, good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are running quickly out of time. So, yeah. any last question? 